Good afternoon. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Bless America. Joe? As Catholics, we had a grace before meals and went, bless the Lord, because I get, you know, you know how it, that fast one that you, you said. Uh, this one is from uh, John O'Donohue. And uh, he uh, gives, a, he has a book out on blessings and he writes in a much more meditative way. He writes, as we begin this meal with grace, let us become aware of the memory carried inside the food before us, the quiver of the seed awakening in the earth, unfolding in a trust of roots and slender stems of growth on its voyage toward har harvest. The kiss of rain and surge of sun, the innocence of animal soul never, that never spoke a word, nourished by the earth, to become today our food, the work of all the strangers whose hands prepared it, the privilege of wealth and health that enables us to feast and celebrate. Amen. Thank you. Silence our cell phones and enjoy your lunch. Uh, so we'll call the meeting back to order and please continue with your lunches, your, your, your great lunches. Um, a different, little bit of a different agenda today, of course. First of all, let's thank our greeter, which is Mr. Joe Cool. Invocation was Mr. Joe Cool. And Sergeant of Arms would have been Tom, but uh, we didn't do it today. So we have no Queen of Sales uh, and, and no uh, Happy Bucks today, uh, but we have other things instead. First, let's start with guests. We have any guests here today? Guest, guest, guest. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Soon to be guests no longer, uh, Andrea from the Boys and Girls Club and, and Mary from Bridgewater. That's fantastic. <laughs> welcome, 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 welcome. Any other guest? Mark. Well, guest cameraman from Rockland Community Access, Michael Simmons. Yeah. Welcome, Michael. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Any other guest? Visiting Rotarians. That would be me. That would be Mark. Welcome, welcome, and thank you. Okay, so. Um, a couple things. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I don't know if everyone got the email today or the last few days with regards to today. Um, this year's uh, there's uh, a cost of 850 per person for the for the meal here today. You can see Robin today if if that's okay, and if not, as she said, we'll catch up to you. Okay, but it is 850 for today, and uh, just a little bit different from from the past. Okay. Uh, and with that said, uh, let me start with a special thanks to Southeastern Regional uh, and their staff for having us today. There's got to be the preparing and the planning and the moving around uh, to host us. So uh, very grateful for that. Um, and a very, very special thanks to our uh, cooks, our chefs, our 
students, instructors who are behind the lines giving us fantastic food. Thank to them. Okay, so uh, let's move on. Um, Mr. Cooney, would you, could you come up here, please? <laughs> President Rich, uh, thank you. So the board met this past uh, week at uh, Tutu Bene's. We've been talking about many issues impacting the club, but one is the centennial. Oh, here, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Brockton Rotary on February 23rd turns 100, and we've been talking about this a little bit leading up to it, and there's quite a few activities that are planned uh, for the year. Those activities um, need some funding, and uh, as a result, the committee came up with an idea to design a specially um, minted lapel pin uh, commemorating the 100 years of service uh, of Brockton Rotary Club to Brockton. And um, through the talents of our class valedictorian, Allison Van Dam, she came up with a wonderful design working with uh, the Rotary leadership here. And the pins arrived on Tuesday. I brought those to the meeting on Tuesday evening. And uh, this is the result. In fact, I'm wearing a sample here. I've got one here. Uh, at the board meeting, I think we had 12 sold committed. Uh, again, this is a limited edition. They will not ever be created again. We're asking for a $100 donation to the Brockton Rotary Charitable and Education <laughs> Fund. Uh, those checks, I, need, I think, need to go to Brent because he controls that account or is the steward of that account, wherever Brent is. Where's Brent? How can I miss Brent? Oh, oh, okay, all right. Uh, so, and then, uh, uh, right? Okay, so that, uh, you, you could also accept them? Right, okay. So um, anyway, so today we're, at, we're going to send this around. If you'd like a pin, please just put your name on it. Tell us how many you want. looks like most people want two or one. Um, and uh, we will get you the pins. Uh, Nick has them in his office. And uh, we'll ask uh, an invoice to go out and um, just go from there. Uh, very happy with the, the results of the pin. And uh, you can see it up close. I'll send this around. Start it with Steve. OK? Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Just one other quick note reminder is next week's meeting is at the Salvation Army. We have to remember that. Um, I'm sure we'll send out emails, but Salvation Army, where we had it last time, it's bag lunch, so you've got to remember to bring your lunch. Um, last time, and I guess I could assume this time, that for those of us who forgot to bring a lunch, they had tuna fish and salad or something there for us. But uh, we'll send an email out so it's there, bag lunch, and most importantly, or just as important, is to bring those winter coats. It, it's specifically for winter coats. So go through your closets. I, I did last weekend, and I've got four to bring in. So go through your closets, and, and, uh, and please get them in because uh, they're, they're very much needed, as we know. Uh, with that said, I'm going to ask Mark Liddy to come up, please. Thank you. Nice to see everybody here. Um, we've been here a few years at Southeastern. I'm, I've been here a little over eight, uh, serving as one of the two Brockton representatives on the school committee. We have 10 members. Uh, Bishop Tony Branch is the other member. Uh, when Wayne McAllister passed, Tony uh, was appointed to the seat by the Brockton City Council, the school committee, and the mayor. And he was going to join us today, but he got called into work. Um, Southeastern is a wonderful resource for the nine communities that we serve. Um, Brockton being the largest, we have a little over 60% of the students uh, from that comprise the school that are from Brockton. Uh, the other communities are East Bridgewater, West Bridgewater, Mansfield, Easton, Norton, Foxborough, Sharon, and Stoughton. How's that? All nine. Um, we, you see buses that say Southeastern Regional. That's where the, where the kids are from, all the communities. We have programs here, newer programs like protective and legal services. We have a, a, a performing arts. We have music. We have video production, a little bit of everything. Um, the school underwent a $33 million renovation that we did not go back to the communities to ask them to fund. 
um, on top of all the struggling budgets, we found a way to bond it and we um, also used our capital money. So the school was all renovated for handicap accessibility, sprinklers, things like that, brought into 21st century standards. The old electrical shop over there was converted over by the students to, um, to a child care center and they did that themselves. The students also built the administration building that's over there years ago that we have our school committee meetings in. And besides the day program, we have an evening program. But the person that knows all of it way better than I do, I'm only a humble school committee member, is our wonderful superintendent of schools, Lewis Lopes, who will tell you about um, we're starting our 50th year and uh, the pins that I gave out earlier in, in, in the day. Um, are commemorating that. We have a gala coming up, and I'll let Lou fill you in on all the rest of them. So if you could welcome, give a good warm rotary welcome to Lou Lopes. Thank you. So uh, welcome. I hope everyone had an enjoyable lunch. Um, uh, and thank you so much for, uh, for, for taking the time to, to, to come and, and visit us and, and hear a little bit about, a little bit more about Southeastern. Um, it used to be where, where we were in vocational education in general was kind of like this hidden secret that nobody knew about. And, and as, as most people know, that's not the case anymore. Uh, uh, we're we're uh, swelling uh, in terms of applications. Last year we had 1,000 eighth graders apply. Uh, we, we accept 375 students, uh, so our waiting list, unfortunately, is bigger than the, the, the number of seats in our capacity. Uh, and we're doing quite a few things to expand on that. Mark mentioned uh, our post-secondary program, which is kind of unique to, to um, vocational schools. Uh, in fact, we have the largest post-secondary public uh, Chapter 74 vocational school in the, in the Commonwealth. Um, and uh, we make up about 60 to 70 percent of all post-secondary uh, population. And, and, and so, the, so some of you I know are here for the governor's announcement about expanding opportunities through post-secondary and so forth. And I think that's one of the reasons why he picked Southeastern, other than the fact this was the first place he visited when he was running for governor. And it changed his mind about how we should educate students. Um, and, and his whole premise is, is, is based on um, kind of a, what our motto or is this education with purpose where uh, to go to school just for sake of going to school um, after a while becomes uh, uh, becomes difficult and uh, is, is I as a, a, a dad to four who you know two uh, who have gone through college and one who's still in college it, it's it's great to, to know that my kids are in college without you know knowing what their what's going to happen what their purpose is after they graduate um, not, you know, undeclared majors and so forth. And that's one of the things we try to do here. About 65% of our students go on to higher education, but, but uh, we find that they're successful. Um, they're more likely, um, if you, the, the students that we, that go from here on to college, they're twice as more likely to, to graduate uh, within uh, five years for a four year or three years for a two year degree. Um, and I think because they go there with focus, they have a career in mind, they know what they want to study, they know what they want to do. Um, and uh, interestingly enough, that might be totally different than the program they're in. So we have, um, <clears throat> we have a girl in plumbing uh, who, who wants to be an attorney. And she's, you know, but she's focused and she's on co-op making some money now and she's going to help pay for her, pay for her, her, um, her law degree. So. Um, so that's what we try to do. We, we say it's not all of, it's not just, it's, it's about options. This whole idea, I know this month is uh, vocational, uh, is it vocational service month for the Rotary? Or, and uh, um, I, was at a, I was at a meeting, we're talking about, you know, schools, and we're going around introducing ourselves, and I introduced myself as the superintendent of Southeastern Regional Vocational Technical High School. A lot of the vocational schools in Massachusetts, to get rid of that stigma from the 60s and the 70s, they got rid of the word vocation, you know, and they just call themselves technical schools. And that's something that, that, I, that, um, that we feel strongly. It's a big part of what we are. Uh, we're not about training kids for just simply jobs or even careers. We want, we want them to find their vocation. We want to find their calling, what, they, what, you know, what their 
what what makes brings them enjoyment and love and so forth and so so we challenge them for that you know and and so we make sure community service is a big part of what they do um, they that's if they can't graduate without a community service project um, uh, as part of their portfolio um, and because we realize that that's that's important and uh, and again uh, it's okay that that you know you're we was talking about you know you start in automotive but then uh, you know you get into the financial management and so forth and services that's okay you know um, because that's that's what we want you to do you know we want you to do something you love to do and be a productive citizen and so forth uh, mark mentioned our 50th anniversary our next big event is uh, we have a, a wonderful winter gala uh, event that's going to be hosted in Stonehill. Uh, I'm going to get the date wrong. It's March 8th, I think. Um, if you're interested, it's a it's going to be a full dinner. We have a, uh, a the band called the World Premier Band, very well known. Uh, we have uh, so there's going to be music, dancing. Um, uh, thanks to our two big event sponsors, there's going to be some drink tickets and so forth, and in addition to a cash bar and some silent auction items. So it's really about a celebration. It's, it, is, it is put on by our foundation, so any proceeds that we do generate will go towards our scholarship fund. But, but it's about celebrating um, our 50, the last 50 years um, and uh, thinking about our next 50 years. And, and, and so, it's, so it's an opportunity for, for family, friends, graduates, and so forth to kind of meet and have a good time. So it's not a... It's not a big fundraiser. We're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna go there. We're not gonna be twisting your arm to buy this or buy that. It's it's about th saying thank you. So if you're at all interested, just let me know. Uh, we'd love to have you join us. Um, so so I just want to kind of expand a little bit about our post-secondary program, our STI. Last night we graduated our 50th class of nurses. Um, our nursing program. So, and, and, and the, uh, the, the nursing program, the students that graduated last year, they, they had it tough. They, they're doing a two-year evening nursing program, so they're juggling full-time jobs. Uh, in fact, one of, the, uh, one of the nurses actually gave, had a child in the middle of her school, and, and, and she only missed four days. And how she did that, I have no idea, uh, so, uh, which is really amazing. Um, so, um, it, it, and... Um, you know, one of the things we're proud of, not just, it's not just about numbers, the fact that, you know, that we, we've been around for 50 years. Uh, we've been ranked as the top nursing program in Massachusetts for the last five years, so. Um. <laughs> so our, our, our next big venue in, in, in the post-secondary area is, is we realize that there's parts of the school that after four o'clock when the kids go home that are vacant. So, so we're really looking at where the careers are where, and, and creating these one-year certificate programs. Um, in addition to, to the nursing, medical, and dental programs we have, we, uh, a few years ago we added culinary arts. Uh, this, the Colonial Room is open uh, from now to the end of March on Tuesday nights uh, for, for dinner. So if you uh, want to come for dinner, um, and that's put on by our post-secondary uh, students. Um, cosmetology has a post-secondary. We just started this week. Electrical and, and plumbing starts in two weeks as adult. They're 10-month adult programs uh, and that lead to jobs, right? Lead to, towards your journeyman's license and so forth. Uh, and then as the governor announced, our next big area is in advanced manufacturing. We're starting two new programs, precision machine engineering and uh, advanced manufacturing slash welding. Those will start, slated to start a year from now. So, um, uh, so again, that's, that's a way we can address, kind of address the, uh, the, these kids on a waiting list or uh, the lack of unskilled labor um, in the greater Brockton area and so forth. Uh, and manufacturing is one of those areas where there's a lot of need and there's good paying jobs and so forth. So, um, so we're happy to kind of be a, be a part of that. Um, I don't know if there are any, any questions. I could, you know, talk about anything, but uh, I don't know if there's anything burning questions about, about the school, about uh, our programs, uh, cooperative education, anything. One, one question is um, usually in vocational education, there's some component of life skills building that goes along with it. 
is that part of what the curriculum is here too as well? It is. So, so we, um, uh, we follow this. We're, we're, we're heavily involved with Skills USA. Some of you may know what Skills USA back in the day used to be called VICA, back if you were in the 80s and 90s like I was. But, um, but they, have a, they have a whole curriculum that is all around, around not, you know, not only life skills, but, but everything from job interviewing, you know, that kind of thing. But then those other types of, you know, how to, how to sit down and have a meal with somebody, you know, you know those types of, of critical things, you know. Um, so, um, so, so that is part of it. And in fact, uh, before they go out on co-op, co-op is our paid externship program. So uh, last year we had, uh, our, between our juniors and seniors, they can go out during their vocational week if they've met certain competencies. Um, they can go out and work and get paid. So in fact, last year's class, they, they earned just under $900,000 on co-op jobs as juniors and seniors. Um, but before they can go on co-op, they have to meet a minimum competency, of, I think it's 70, a score 70 or higher, to, you know, so that they know that they can't just not show up for work, you know, or, or be 10 minutes late, you know. Um, I was rushed out and they were, my principal was just talking to three, three students that have been been like one or two minutes late ten times or more and he's saying no that's not acceptable you know you got to get here on time and what are you going to do about that so uh, so we, that is a big part of what we do because that is the number one reason people lose their jobs it's not lack of skill it's they can't get along with their colleagues they don't show up on time right it's the number one reason so so we so that's 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 a critical piece of what we have to teach them yeah uh, Yeah, so we have, uh, as part of our 50th anniversary, uh, we're, we're putting a memorial brick uh, patio down by our, um, by our athletic football field, um, and we're selling, uh, we're selling uh, memorial bricks. Um, and we will we'll let you know more about that, but, uh, um, you know, for, for whether they're past graduates or, or um, and what we're going to do is, and our plan is each year, to just take, uh, have a quick little breakfast and just take a few minutes to kind of remember those that, are, that were involved with Southeastern that are no longer with us uh, and uh, hopefully it will become an, a nice little annual uh, event. So, yeah. yeah. Great. Well, again, thank you very much. And, and I hope, uh, I hope this, this continues to be an annual event. And if anyone would like a tour or, or, or anything, uh, I, I do have a little bit of time, so so that's not a problem at all. Okay. All right. Thank you, Superintendent. Uh, so the, the the list went around that Chris was sending with with the uh, the sign up. Has everyone has, has everyone seen it? You're all you're all set with that. Okay. Um, and then Mark, everyone's got the 50th uh, pin from here, okay? Yes, Lou. I just wanted to point out, it is that on the lectern, there is what appears to be a logo for Southeastern Regional. It looks to be, you know, a wheel from a cog in a wheel, which looks a lot like the yes. rotary car as well. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, it's, uh, we have plenty of time here. Any discussions, concerns, anything? Yeah, you can eat. You want to eat some more? Anything? <laughs> Nothing. Well, thank you for coming, and we'll see you next week at Salvation Army with your bag lunch and your coats. Thanks.